If you like, just keep your eyes closed and just relax. And feel that vibration of divine love radiating through your heart, through your soul, throughout every cell and fiber in your body. Take a deep breath. Relax. Let go. Let go of all the hustle bustle of the day, of the week, of the month, of the years past. For all we have is this moment. This moment in this place. And the time to remember who we are. We are sparks of the vine itself. Light in human form. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Was he just talking to one or two? Or was he speaking to all of us? Every single one on this planet. You are the light. You are the peace. You are the love. Sent into this world. To bring it forth from the very soul of creation. From within you. You are here to birth a new age, a new time, a new beginning, a time of release, a time of letting go of all the hurts, the pains, the struggles, and the strife. As a little chick begins to break forth from the shell, so are my children. but no one can do it for you. The little chick would not survive if he didn't go through the struggle of breaking his way out of the shell. You stand in this place right now, my children. You are being born again. You're being born anew. You are being born in spirit and in truth. Why do you think things are so chaotic? Why are things pushing in on you? It's pushing from the inside to push you outward. Outward. And yes, you go through that tunnel of darkness. But you go through that tunnel of darkness to not fear. But to move forward, to move forward, because you see the light at the end of the tunnel. This is not physical death. This is new life that you're bringing from your inside out. Your soul, your love, your strength, pushing forward with everything that seems to be squashing you. Is it not like being grapes on the vine? That when they're ripe and beautiful, they begin to be made into wine. And within that grape, all the beautiful juice is squeezed out. It's squeezed out. The same thing is going on. The beauty of who you are is coming from the inside out. The love of who you are. A time you can release and let go of all the things that are in the past. You must be born again. We're not speaking of reincarnation at this moment. 
but you have gone through many, many lifetimes on this planet and others. And you've arrived to the place to experience that new birth. You're here and now coming forth to be the master of your own world, not to conduct or direct or tell someone how they should do or not do. For this day, we're asking you to step down off of the throne of your heart, for you have been the judge the whole time. You have been judging everyone outside of yourself and you've been judging yourself. Have you not heard, thou shalt not judge? For whatsoever you judge another, the same judgment will come on you. You're walking through that right now of releasing judgment for the throne of your heart where you're, you've been sitting to judge all things. Allow the judge of who you are to step off that throne. Step out of that courtroom. Judge no more. As you come to that place where you judge not, because what you've been doing through incarnations and incarnations, you've been putting on robes of flesh when you incarnate here on planet Earth. And with those robes of flesh, you have taken on all kinds of things that you would call negative, you would call dark. But what is darkness but the absence of light? What is hate but the absence of love? What is sadness but the absence of joy? There is no absence of love. It is the greatest power there is. But as you push your way through these places, you will have understanding. The great white buffalo is a spirit that leads us onward. And the Native Americans, as they look to a white spirit, a big power, see that divine power in whatever way you will, call it what you want. But it helps you to have the power to run through the storm as the buffalo does when it comes and not be like the cow and run away from the storm. For in your weakness, you become strong. In the darkness, you push forth to the light. This is a time in history like none other. Cycles of time, vibrations of dimensions and frequencies are pushing into the planet right now. When your brother Jesus came in, a man, a human such as you, but the soul had awakened and was pushing forth the light. And on that cross, all things were crucified. All things. For he said, it is finished. In your time and space, you say, I have no understanding. Nothing is finished. Look at the pain. Look at the sorrow. Look at all the things that's happening in this world. But that's the time that the great central sun began to shed forth its light with great power. And it is now beginning to touch planet Earth. Where darkness, darkness will meet the light. And all the things of all the past yesterdays and all the past lifetimes and all the karma that has been created. As a species, you are moving through that together and birthing a time of peace 
a time of brotherhood, of sisterhood, a time of family. For ages, you say this is impossible. But as you begin to weave, weave yourself together. Weave yourself together in unity and in love. You begin to stop judging and drop the hate and the bitterness and the division and strife. The power of love will help you and assist you in ascending to places you never dreamed possible. Awaken to who you are, my children. Awaken during this age, age. What we speak of this day, we speak not to the, the ego or the natural mind, all that's blending together, coming into oneness within you. But the words that were left in ancient scripture in the things that you think it, this was from ages ago, I want to throw it away. It means nothing to me. It's because you've been listening with your intellect. But the time is now that the words are becoming life and life more abundant. The words were given, but it was given for your soul to hear, for your heart to hear and understand. The watering of that Christ seed that God's seed within you is beginning to sprout and take root. Over 2,000 years, only a blink of an eye, this process has now begun. Will it take another 2,000 or 5,000? The choice is up to you. The free will, will I walk in the light and be the light? Will I walk in peace and birth peace? You have free will, my children. Take as long as you want to take to find your pathway to mastership. Mastership over all the emotions, all the thoughts, all the feelings that the fleshly body desires. Until that day comes that you find that pearl of great price. The light that's within you, that's been hidden since the foundations of the world is now being awakened. Be at peace. Be at peace, my children. Be at peace. As we are with you always. Always. Even to the end of this Aquarian age and beyond. And so it is. Peace, love, and blessings. Peace, love, and blessings. Namaste. This morning, I was sharing with Tony something that happened. I think you've heard my story. I tell stories all the time. I repeat, you know, things that happened when I was little. But I've mentioned it to y'all before. I was sitting on a, there was a little church behind us, and I was sitting on the steps. And I would go into these altered states, I believe, at about four or five years old. And I would have this vivid imagination. And my little dog came up. I was rubbing him. I saw this little bug thing on him. And I recognized it was a flea. And when I looked at that flea, 
I guess I had had a magnifying glass sometime that week playing with it. And I thought, hmm, that flea's on my doggy's back. And that flea doesn't even comprehend. This is what I was thinking. He doesn't even realize that dog is his world. This dog is where he gets his that food, whatever it needs, this warmth, everything from that dog. And then I thought, if I could look at that little flea with my magnifying glass, if I could catch him, I bet other little things are on him. And then I started thinking of eyelashes. And I thought, there's probably something small living on my eyelash. There's probably something small living on that. If that little bug has eyelashes, it's probably something living there. And then I thought, my goodness, everything goes down to little things. And I bet everything goes to big things. And I started thinking of the stars and, and everything and the moon, the sun. I thought, well, maybe that's what heaven's about. Maybe as we leave here, we'll have our own planet. So I was thinking vast at that time. Had no idea that I was actually thinking quantum physics, I suppose. And so this morning when I got up, I told, told Tony, I said, I had a strange experience. I said, do you remember me telling you about that little the experience I had thinking about that little flea on my doggy's back? I said, early this morning, I was the little flea on my doggy's back. And I'd been trying to get to the highest place to see what I could see. And I'd been traveling here and there. And finally, my little dog, his little ears always stuck up, you know, always listening. He was a little fox terrier, little red fox terrier. And I said, I found myself being on the tip of his ear. And I looked down and saw this thing I lived on. And it was like, oh, my gosh. Wow. But then I looked up and thought, wow, what is this? Something beyond me. And I think what my soul was telling me, we're coming to the place. We haven't even touched the surface of the vastness of what this creative life force is. It's expanding constant, constantly. And the going within and the going without. It's a living energy that we're waking up to. Something that will never end the great adventure of life. The soul is eternal. We can lay the body down, but the body is that which is connected to the, the matter that is physical, all this stuff is one day going to be dust. It will pass away. But who we are will never pass away. And we're standing in a time like we've never stood in before. A time of opening our eyes and opening our hearts and finding the truth of who we are. We are cells in the body of a mighty, mighty, expensive, energy field that has consciousness and it's it's love it's what i keep hearing this week i think i hope you all had a good valentine's day maybe that's what's affected me the energy of of thoughts at least that day we can think of others and think of those people we love could we do this every day appreciating what someone brings to us. And going through this valley with my son, I had a dream that I was in a courtroom. And in that courtroom, the judge was up there. And I heard the judge is now coming off the throne. And so I stood up as the judge was leaving, but I recognized that judge was me. And this week I found myself no longer judging, no longer judging, no longer trying to change someone, 
my prayer has been about my son. He's been free of drugs for several years, but he's been on medication. Medication and God works. He's back being a little boy. He was just as good as he could be, sweet as he could be. Family love him. Go and see his grandmother and wanted to go visit family every weekend, do things. But the antibiotics were not working with his medications. So they took him off of it. So he's a wild child now. <laughs> and um, hope and pray he didn't get back on anything like that. But if it's not my decision. I recognize whatever's going on, it's hard to release your children or your husband or your wife or anyone and say, let them do what they need to do. But I'm feeling we have to go through the dark places to find the light. Every single one of us is doing that. Every single one of us is doing that, I believe, right now in some shape, form, or fashion. And to respect the process, it doesn't mean we're not there for someone. That's not what I'm saying. Don't just throw them out the window, you know, and give up on them. Because I believe in divine order also. Divine order. Just like now, I've never paid attention to the, I have to, I'll take that back. Astrology, I will dabble in it a little bit. You know, I think we all have done that. But to really hang on to it and to understand it. I have it, but I've heard a few things about Saturn and, and uh, Uranus and different things are affecting Aquarius age we've walked into. And so some reason that's clicking in me that the universe itself is set up where it affects us. You know, the moon affects us, uh, the waves going in and out. And then it's uh, the energy of the moon when it's full. They call it, you know, the lunar moons and different things like that. People kind of get loony. I know when I was in the hospital that women usually gave birth about that time. Or if you were in a, oh, I've worked in a lounge too. And people would have fights during that time. The moon affects our emotions. And so all the planets affect who we are too. Right now we've moved into an Aquarian age. And I've mentioned this before because it's out there. That song goes through my head. Us back in the 60s, the age of Aquarius, the age of Aquarius for peace and love and joy. It's like that impossible thing, you know, but there it was. And the hippie age and all that kind of stuff, wanting love, but the love was known on a, a physical level. But now it's raising up to that heart level. It's not about drugs and sexuality and flesh. It's about love from the spirit. It's about getting high off the energies of the divine. Don't need anything to do that. Just take me higher and higher. You begin to have visions without any kind of thing to stimulate it, except it's the vibrations it's going through, the colors, the amazing things that's happening. Your intuition is opening up. Why? Because we're moving into that glorious age that will be for many, many ages to come. And in that process, what will happen, we'll begin to move in to that love space. And Saturn, Saturn is now coming into the forefront and playing a big, powerful part of this age. And what Saturn does, it kind of goes along with Satan, but it's not really that. You know, that's what the word came from, Satan, from Saturn. Saturn is one that it is very harsh, people think. But it's not really. Saturn wants equality. Saturn wants hard work. Saturn wants dedication. Saturn wants people to get in line and do what they came to do. Does that make any sense? So this is why it's so hard on us right now, because it's bringing up, this is the day Jesus spoke of and others spoke of, that in that day, all things that are hidden will come to light. 
all things hidden. And that's in every area there is. It's coming to light. And I like to think it will come to light just to us, you know. But we might find out that a lot of things are happening that people begin to know about us or about government or about um, companies. That's the thing it's hitting right now. It's tired of people hiding their junk. It's tired of people lying to each other. It's tired of people deceiving each other. So that energy is hitting, hitting. What it's doing, the light is coming in, the darkness there, and Saturn's bringing it up. Bring it up, not to destroy you, but to help you see those areas that you haven't been seeing within yourself. And right now, the intuition is waking in all of us a little more and a little more. Why? It's so you will get clarity because you're going to heal so many things and see so many things hitting this earth right now. And you don't know what to believe. Why? Because we have been like sheep just following, uh, following each other. We've given up our power since we, we've been born, being conditioned. And now the soul is beginning to awaken and know it has the power and authority over what? Yourself. And we're not meant to give it over to somebody else. Now, as I'm speaking, some may think I'm on some kind of side. I'm not on anybody's side. I'm just right here, just right here. Because you can listen to all the stories either way. And whoever you listen to most, that's who you're going to follow. Go in here. Listen to your heart. Get in that still place. How will you know when somebody's thinking, how will I know when I'm there? You find peace. Peace. I can't find peace. Just breathe. Just breathe. Three or four deep breaths, just really slow and easy, and let it out. When you do, you'll find your body relaxing. But what we do, we get so tense about everything. We get so tense. But if we just relax, relax and let go, and let spirit be our guide, let go of everything. And I've been thinking that that song, Let Go of the Shore, that's a, something that Karen Drucker, I think one of her songs in the death, let go of the shore, let the water, to me, the water is a spirit, is a life force within us. We can't do without life, uh, without water, you know that? There wouldn't be anything on this planet that's living if we didn't have water here. But just like that lady came to Jesus and he said he had water that she didn't know of. He had living waters, that, that water, the spiritual energy. It wants to flow in and through us, that life force. And all we have to do is just breathe. Because we're like the fish in the ocean. You know the little story of the fish that was looking for the ocean, don't you? And he told his friends he was going to find the ocean. So he journeyed out everywhere, and he went from sure years and years looking for the ocean. Nobody could tell him where the ocean was. That's our life. We have life in the ocean. It gives you life. Well, where is it? I want to find it. I want to find it. And one day he went back home after his long journey. And someone there that was wise said, you're in it. You're in it. This is our ocean. The very breath we breathe moves in us and through us. 
It is the life, the ever flowing essence of the breath of creation, the breath of God itself. And it was given to us the moment we breathe into this world. But I'm getting another picture. That life is flowing through even when the mother is carrying us. That that she's breathing is flowing through us also. It's becoming aware of you and the creative life force are one. That's what Jesus came teaching. He came to show you that this could be done. And he said, come and follow me. Come and follow me. And all that I do, you can do also. It was following the Christ within, following divinity within, following the great I am that's in you. But we all seem to need something outside of ourselves to reflect back to us until that day comes that we can see the divinity and everyone around us and let go of what we've known so far and begin to float in to our destiny, into that place that's already been prepared for us, not in some sweet by and by, but right here, right now, in the wonderful here and now. It's time, it's time. Let go and relax. What I've been hearing for ages, it seems like, for at least three or four years or beyond that, is fear not. Fear not. When the fear begins to subside, you'll recognize the peace and the love was already there all the time. That's grace. It's already been given to us. But I'm remembering an old story from way back where this man came in this beautiful restaurant and he sat down and, oh my, it was so nice and everything. He'd look around and, and he'd see people, oh, the food looks so good. And, and then he'd look over and see that somebody that walked in after him already had their meal. And he thought, well, what's going on? I've been here way longer than they have. And people are eating and the waitress hasn't come to help me at all. So he saw somebody raised his hand. She came over and he said, I, I don't, I, I don't care for this. He said, I came in here. This is a beautiful place. The food smells so good. He said, but I've been sitting here longer than most of these people in here. And he said, nobody's come to even offer me a drink. And she said, oh, uh, did you know this, this is a buffet? This is a buffet. And I think that's what's happening. God is saying life is a buffet. Life is a buffet. Get up and get it yourself. It's already given to you. It's already there. We live in an abundant world. It's time to find our power, our strength, our love, and our peace. And let go of the shore. Deb, do you happen to have that song, Let Go of the Shore? You would just kind of... Go into that place of stillness. And if you do, if you have a visual on the screen, that would be good, possibly. So just let go of things that's bothering you. Just let go and let God take you to that place you need to go.
Bible, so much of it has been given to speak to your soul, and the mind can't, hasn't it to this time, seem to comprehend it. So that water is the water of the divine spirit moving, and the letting go, I feel, is the letting go of anything that's holding you back in life, and just releasing and trusting that the spirit will carry you right to where you need to be going for your highest good. Without the fear, just make those steps. Jesus walked on water. That wasn't to say this is a huge miracle. Everybody can go out and walk on water. But the message to the soul was, I've overcome the emotional body. I've tamed the, net, the flesh and the desires of it. I have control over my thoughts. I have control over my speech. I have a control over my actions. The storms of life and the waters of life that rage all around no longer have control on me. That's what Jesus was showing us. And you too can walk on the waters of this troublesome time. You can find true contentment. You can have peace of mind. Keep your eyes on that divine spirit within and you'll find. Jesus would say, come walk on the waters with me. And so it is. Let me close with the daily word.
Deb asked me what I was going to read today as a daily word. I told her I picked up something I'm sure was in my Bible. So if you'd like to just close your eyes and maybe these words are actually your words. Divine order. I am a part of God's orderly universe. Divine order works in me. The more aware I am of God's present, the more clearly I recognize divine order at work in my life. I think about the time of serendipity connections with people, the decisions and the components that lead to a perfect outcome. Occurrences of divine order are not because I made things happen. They are evidence of the activity of God at work in my life. Trying too hard to control and to force results can set up roadblocks. It can set up disappointments. I faithfully hold my desire in mind and heart and seek divine guidance. As Jesus said, not my will, God, but thine be done. And I act confidently upon that. I create a receptive spaciousness in my mind, and I trust God to how and when my blessings come. I am part of God's orderly universe. I let divine order work in me. In Ecclesiastes 3, 1, for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. Dear loving creator, we give thanks for this time we have together. I know not what the people that came today came for, nor I don't know why the people are tuning in. For I feel I have nothing to give, but God, you have it all to give to each and every individual. Touch those hearts as I know you're doing. Awaken us, awaken us. Yes, may we open our eyes that we may see the things that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither is it being recorded, the things that you will experience, that we will experience together, for all is in divine order. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. The ushers would please come if this has blessed you in any way today and you would like to give a financial blessing. We really would appreciate it. But the doors can stay open. And hopefully others will be blessed. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive, and I am grateful. Thank you, God.
Thank you, WG. And for those that are hearing this the first time, I'm not here to try to change your mind on anything. So don't think that you, it's time to throw everything out the door that you believe. No, hold on to it. Hold on to it. Only if this resonates for you. I'm not here to ever tell anybody to do anything different than what they're already doing. But may this add to your journey is my prayer. And may the light and the love fill you more and more each and every day as you choose that. Because everything is your choice. I give thanks for this visible evidence of the bounty of God. I send it forth with love and joy to do its perfect work. And we know you're doing that perfect work in all of life, dear God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So it is. If you'd like, would you like to close by holding hands in a circle and singing the peace song before we leave? Or not. You don't have to do it. And if you could stay in the aisle a little bit for three chairs there so you can hold each other's hand, the ones that are staying, so we can uh, be behind Tony. Um, Amanda, if you can go there and there. Could you get that way, hon? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Thank <laughs> you.